And then obviously I've always felt things for girls. Now in hindsight, I understand what that was. But at the time, it was this burning curiosity for the forbidden, which was also so hot. I remember sticking my hand under this girl's skirt and she had a silk slip. My brother, nothing hotter than a silk slip. But first, a word from our sponsors. The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by Audio Desires, an erotic audio platform dedicated to giving you the best oral sex you can have. With hundreds of sexy stories in three different languages and a sleek, user-friendly design, Audio Desires is the right fit to get you in the mood. Enjoy 50% off an annual membership or 20% off a monthly membership when you use promo code MANHOR at audiodesires.com. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. What's up, all you kinky Jews, you queer Catholics? Shout out to all you hedonist Hindus and whatever that Yellow Jackets cult is. Seems a little funky. Hey, this is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Hey, 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 welcome to the show if you're new. Welcome back if you're not. Uh, This week's guest is comedian Leah Forster. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about her and her uh, escape from Orthodox Judaism in a little bit. Uh, But first... Do you like champagne? No? You don't drink? Hey, good for you, man. Seven years? Good job. But do you like connecting with like-minded people? Are you curious about sex positivity, non-monogamy, and more? Don't know who in your life you can really talk to about that type of stuff? Hey, we got a place for you. It's called The Champagne Room. It is our super free, super fun, super sex positive Discord server. And we'd love to see you introduce yourself in there. I'm telling you about the Champagne Room again because I just launched a new feature, a new special channel, one of soon to be more. I just launched the Porn Share channel, which will be only available to Patreon members. The Discord server, it's free. Porn Share is uh, is for patrons only and it is a channel where we are just sharing links to porn we like, links to OnlyFans creators we're digging. Links to that hot, hot content. We're uh, we're gonna we're just like kind of slowly putting together a shared porn playlist. Sometimes I just get on a really good stroke streak. I start like copying and pasting URLs into the porn chair. I'm like, hey everybody, anyone want to join me? This is what I'm watching. Uh, I just learned about Cock Hero. Did you all know that this is a type of porn that exists in the world? It is like it's kind of, it's it's like JOI jerk off instructional videos. T- taken to the max it's like gamified and so like instead of guitar hero she tells you when to stroke you're stroking on the double notes the half notes the quarter notes all culminating in a nice cum i gotta say it was really fun to it was a really nice way to edge for a half hour shout out to dan for for sharing this concept in the porn share channel in the champagne room Again, you got to be a Patreon member to access Porn Share, but it is free for you to join us in the Champagne Room at manwhorepod.com slash Discord. Every weekday, we got a question of the day. It's really fun, interactive. Today's question of the day, as I'm recording this on Tuesday, uh, is it wrong to check people out at the gym? Tell us what you think at manwhorepod.com slash Discord. There's also an episode discussion channel, so you're always welcome to pop in and share your thoughts on this week's show or any week's show in there. So, you know, I like to have sex with my friends. Uh, A lot of my active friendships are people I used to have sex with uh, or am currently having sex with or, you know, honestly, might have sex with one day in the future. I hung out with a cute friend of mine I've known for years on Sunday. After we acknowledged there was some sexual tension, I went down on her for the first time. You know, like friends do. I don't know. Sex is fun. Uh, my friends and I like to have fun together. So, like, why wouldn't we also sometimes make out? It's something I really like about non-monogamy, that I have the freedom to explore connections that make me feel good. Because sex feels good. Because making someone come is just another way to show that I care, <laughs> right? I mean, if you're not making me come or subscribing to my Patreon or birth to me, like, do you care about me? Honestly. I read this great piece last week on Mike.com. 
by Ian Kumamoto. Uh, the title is Queer People Have Mastered Sexual Friendships and It's Time You Straights Caught On. It talks about how queer people have learned to navigate sex with friends better by necessity. That because queerness was criminalized for so long, they came together to touch because for many, that was the only way that they could get some sexual intimacy. Oh, you're gay? I'm gay? We're the only known gays for miles? Want to touch dicks and see what that's about? I put a link to the article in the show notes, and and I posted it in the champagne room. Uh, You should definitely give it a read because I think it makes a lot of great points. Ian's article also points out that, quote, sex is not necessarily the make or break of a queer friendship, nor is it the great definitional divider of friend versus lover. Right? I'm not friends with someone because we had sex. We're friends because we both think Settlers of Catan would be more fun if you could trade sexual favors for resources. And if we're both cute and slutty, why not have orgasms together too? Like friends. But it's still a friendship regardless of if we are currently doing the dirty. I have friendships that wax and wane on the physicality over years because the sex was never at the core of the friendship in the first place. I'll be honest, sometimes it's an instigator, sure, but it's not the most important element. Jeez, you know, fuck buddies last longer with me if we're also real friends. You know, friends I can go to when I'm struggling, friends I can celebrate with when I'm winning, friends who send me memes. Crying on a friend's shoulder is incredibly intimate. Helping a friend plan a wedding proposal or babysitting their kid is intimate. Also, I don't know if y'all remember Anna Supersla, who's been on the podcast a couple times. Like when the first time Paige and I broke up, Anna was like, hey, do you want me to come over and give you a breakup blowjob? Would that make you feel better? And I was like, yes. And maybe some candy. And then afterwards, like, I think I cried, you know, like intimacy has never been exclusive to a romantic partner in our society. Ian continues in the article, quote, if I do have sex with a friend, it's almost a way of showing how much I love them as a friend. I won't pretend to undervalue the benefits of coming, but you know, you get the idea. And I've tried to explain this to Wallet Note Lady, that sex can be truly a pleasurable activity. And it's nice when a friend tells me how hot my butt looks the day after a Domino's binge when I'm feeling gross. Like, yes, I can get that from a romantic partner, but I I don't understand why I should only get that from a romantic partner. Because there's nothing romantic about friend sex for me. It really is just sex. I've been asked, then, if sex doesn't separate friendships from romance. What does? It's a fair question. For me, it's the romance. It's the prioritization. It's that inexplicable feeling that penetrates past your heart and into your soul. And unless I'm practicing polyamory, the thing that is special and unique and exclusive to a girlfriend, for me at least, is that romantic love. It's clicking with someone on a cosmic scale and wanting to build a life together and die in the same bed 50 years later. That's what makes a girlfriend, a long-term romantic partner, special to me. Sex isn't what makes a relationship special. That's just something fun I do with pretty people. Devotion is when the word love does not fully encapsulate what she means to you. Again, check out that article of of, of Mike.com by Ian Kumamoto. Uh, Queer people have mastered sexual friendships. Link in the show notes or link in the champagne room. Go visit over there again at manorpod.com slash discord uh, if you got some thoughts on that topic you want to share. Before I get to this week's guest, Leah Forster, let's do a quick fan whore appreciation moment. Okay, got to do this one quick because I got therapy in five minutes. This is a quick shout out to a member of the fan whore community on Patreon, one of these uh, beautiful angels who are helping support the pod, not just with their downloads, but their dollars. Today, I want to say a big, big extra thank you to Nick Coolman. Cool, man. Oh, how many times have you gotten that one over the last, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years? Cool, man. And hey, I think it's cool, man, that you are supporting the pod on Patreon. Thank you very much. And you too can become a member for as little as $2 a month and support the podcaster that you love. And you can also enjoy the Porn Share channel in the Champagne Room. <laughs> you can do any and all of that over at patreon.com slash Podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Podcast. So uh, as some of y'all have uh, picked up or have heard, I am the producer on another podcast. I'm not one. I'm not on the show. 
I'm too much of a goy to be on the show, but I am the producer of The Joy of Text, where real sex meets Jewish law. Uh, one of the co-hosts is uh, Dr. Bacheva Marcus, who y'all heard on the podcast last year. And Leah was a guest on The Joy of Text recently, and I was like, I would love to have you on where you can be a little less censored. And boy, was she. So Leah uh, was part of the Haredi community. She's uh, the, the Hasidic Jews, you know, it's under, uh, under the umbrella of Orthodox Judaism. I think I got that right. Basically, there's some of the strictest of the strict adherence to the Torah and to Jewish law. But Leah always knew that she was different. She always knew, wow, girls make something tingle on my insides. Leah and I had a dope conversation. Hope you enjoy it. Let's go hear about a queer journey with comedian Leah Forster. Tax season is coming up, everybody. It ain't sexy, but it's necessary. And for years, I have been filing with BrassTaxes.com. Yep, they offer tax help for freelancers, artists, and as their website calls it, other nice people. The sooner you schedule your first appointment, the cheaper it is to file with them. So if you don't feel like you've been getting your money's worth out of quote-unquote free tax applications, head on over to BrassTaxes.com and schedule a consultation today. Let them know Billy Presida sent you. I'll get a little bit on the back end. BrassTaxes.com. Let's get to the show. I was like, I picked up on your vibe. This And, and I have two other guy friends, by the uh-huh. way. They're both straight. But if I tell you they're lesbians, they have such incredible... And the reason why I say lesbians is because let's say Gen Z, they're all lesbians. All the boys are lesbians. <laughs> Meaning like, because... because um, because um sexuality so fluid and they're Mm -hmm. growing up in such a fluid generation they literally don't give two fucks these men my um child's boyfriend they polish their nails and they like wear all this rainbow stuff and he's like a man he's tall and strapping and whatever but he doesn't give a because they're sensitive he's Mm -hmm. like 19 and he's like really sensitive and really um confident with his feminine side but your age and your generation they're not and you give me very comfortable in my feminine energy the fact that you're so comfortable saying these girls wanted to hook up with me but they didn't want to boo me is such a feminine right. it's such a female sensitive which is wrong that we have that gender or whatever but it is yeah. it shouldn't be but it is and you're comfortable with it it's fucking cool as i learn about like these alternative like gender identities like non-binary or non conform whatever you know i think a lot of it's still in flux and getting figured out and you know once it's all figured out i may or may not resort myself like can, am I a man and we're getting rid of gender norms so therefore I can be a man yeah. however I am a man? Yeah. Or we there is a way to be a man and I'm definitely not that, therefore I'm this other I thing. I like option A. If everybody, whether of the in queer land or in the mainstream world or whatever, if I have to explain the thing and everybody's looking at me in a certain way. No, but you're very like, approachable. Your look is very approachable. It's not an intimidating look. Oh, thank you. Like I have an intimidating look. Well, yeah, you look like you, you know, you fucking face stomp someone on the curb. Right. So, and I would. Um, so I give off, and it's funny because people will say to me, like, Leah, you have masculine energy. I get that a lot. And I'm like, I do not. I am all woman and I have badass bitch energy. But we have put these words on it where somebody says masculine and that automatically means aggressive or take charge or in control. What the fuck? I'm a woman who takes charge and is in control. But we've mm-hmm. given men that privilege. And in that sense, you are correct. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I would like to I would like to be able to uh, just be like a soft boy who cries. But if that's not what a boy it's is, so I don't give hot. a fuck. If I was going to fuck a dude, that's exactly the kind of guy that I would fuck. Because to me, I'm a top. Right. And I'll top anyone. So it doesn't matter what you look like. Well, everyone tune into the bonus episode, I guess. <laughs> I'm here right now with comedian Leah Forster. Is that how you started by saying I'm a top? You said you're a top. I said nothing. Wait, I want to clarify. I, well, Sexually, I, I'm a top. Emotionally, I'm a bottom. Mm. I'm a, an emotional rock bottom. No, I am an emotional top hardcore. I have a Valentine's Day bear to give to someone uh, on Monday. Um, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a, definitely like a distinct difference between like mask vibe and the badass vibe. Yeah. And, like clearly, yeah, look, you got the side shave. You're wearing all black. You got the torn up jeans, the big ass boots. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a vibe. Too bad um, you guys can't see it. I, I, well, we'll get a picture up. Oh, for, okay, good, um, good. All because right. like, 
Because you need it. You well, need it. They would it. never know you were like raised in such a Hasidic way and that you like escaped, so to speak, like a, a culture. Pretty much. Where I went from a so very, normal. very restricted culture and now I live a completely non-restricted life. So that's why even now in every other area of my life, I will never be told what to do. Not mm-hmm. politically, not religiously, not sexually. And you know what? Let's just get into it right away. That is why I do not appreciate the label lesbian. I don't. So for all you guys that are listening out there, I'm wondering if I'll suck your dick. <laughs> the answer is probably not unless you have a lot of money. No. Um, but but like I might peg the shit out of But you. I might. And also I might suck your I'll dick. just put that there then. Okay, yes. Great. Uh, That's <laughs> tiny though. That's really small. I'm, I'm still like I'm not a big... You won't take you won't take it. I will try, but like, you know, I gotta I gotta get up there. This is a toy that's supposed to help do that. But like even this I've for seen me, those. It's so funny, you know but, why? But, because but, but, yeah. watch what it does. The idea is that you put it in first and then you slowly turn it and it'll get, if I go fast, thicker. Right? So the idea is to help like prepare you. Don't oh worry. Oh my it's clean. god. No, I got it. So it's like marinating the asshole. It's kinda of, yeah, you put it in first and you slowly get it. This I'm open. a big fan of and I'll tell you yeah. why. I love the teas. Everything is in the teas yeah. to me. So to me, the idea of like coaxing my mm-hmm. way in there is fucking hot. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't fuck someone with this, but this would prep you to prep them to be fucked. So are you you're all record. You're recording this, right? Yeah, we're going. Okay, attention, everyone. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that in the first thirty seconds of this, you've heard the word asshole, sucking dick, and lesbian, it, and you're like, "What the hell's going on here? This is not the Leia Forster that we know." This is every week on the Man Whore Podcast. Oh everybody. my! This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. You know, it's actually because sometimes so when I have like more like maybe like some of the feminist authors, and we're talking a little bit more like gender theory stuff, it definitely will be cleaner. And then by the end of the episode i'm like wow we didn't say blowjob once crazy <laughs> and then you throw it in there just for good measure just to be like you gotta hit a quota. all right so let the audience know that i am coming off of a two-year streak pretty much of sexless behaviors mm-hmm. and i very recently had somebody open my pandora's box so Ooh. right now i'm just 24 7 all i all i want to do is fuck okay right so now. i should have put a towel down on that couch first <laughs> i guess uh, I hope you don't leave oh any stains. Oh my God, people, I apologize. Just know as you're tuning in, it's because you want to be here. So you're here with <laughs> consent. Just keep that in mind. Well, well why don't you, t- why, so you so tell me, tell us about this this Pandora's box. Last time we talked, you were like, I don't just want to Don't you want to tell your laid. audience who I am first? Why well, did I say that? I'm here with Camille and Leia Forster. Oh, okay, okay. There's a whole monologue up top. I'll, okay, like, I'll all right. It. So um, for those of you that aren't familiar, I come from an ultra-Orthodox background, which basically means that I grew up extremely um, sheltered and restricted. We were never introduced to the opposite sex, no secular culture. Um, so no, no TV, touching, no, no internet, no boys. Mm-hmm. P.S. I really didn't mind that part at all. <laughs> um, so yes, I grew up with none of that. I had no knowledge of the outside world. And this isn't um, Judaism. This is ultra, ultra Hasidic Orthodox mm-hmm. Judaism. This is and like letter of the Torah law. Exact Judaism. to the T. It's actually above that. In, in Hebrew, we call it lifnim mishuras hadin, which means even above the law. Yeah. My my group of people that I grew up around took extra precautions. For example, since you are not allowed to um, touch a man until marriage, you also cannot um, sing in front of a man. And you also cannot say, I love you to you your... Can't, what, you're not allowed to touch his soul with your words? Exactly, because <laughs> if you sing... You know, and also not allowed to wear, exactly. And you're not allowed to wear perfume Uh around a man because lest he, you know, spill unnecessary seed thinking of the sexy smells. Even like normal, like, I don't know what the right word is for normal, but like your standard, like Orthodox Jew wouldn't even do go to that extreme, right? No, your regular Orthodox Jew is like a lot of like the new Orthodox community that I've been introduced to is super chill and very much like live and let live and they practice how they want to practice. Um, But this is ultra orthodox judaism which is it's like i said no red nail polish mm-hmm. no hanging earrings no even very subtle or no makeup at all anything that you can do to stay modest because the idea is that you're very precious is that sinias or is that sinias that Sinaeus. is the laws of I, modesty this boy is learning so much you're welcome from you the- are very welcome you know what's fucked up now i find it so sexy and kinky like when i see religious women mm-hmm. 
I just like want to rip their wigs off and fucking push my hand onto their skirt and rip off their tights. There's yes, be, ladies, I mean you. That's got to be a porn for that. There's, There's got to be porn that exists. There isn't. I there bet you is not. That I'm gonna, I, we're going to have to email Erica Lust or somebody and be like, can you get, get Please, on this? Please, I would even direct it. You'd, then do it. What I'm learning through through being the producer for Joy of Text, where real sex meets Jewish law everywhere you listen to audio. Boom. I'm I'm learning all. I mean, we're just talking about like the intricacies of sex within Judaism, like the fact that it's like you know. I remember they got someone they got an advice question once with, about like using whipped cream in the bedroom, and they were asking about. And I don't even know what I don't understand this question, but like Rabbi, the Rabbi understood the question. They were like. Well, if we use the whipped cream, like when do we do the brocha prayer? Right. And like we have to do one thing in one room and one in another room. And I was like, and he had an answer. He was like, oh, I guess you would do the whipped cream here and then you do the prayer and then you I go to a different room and you fuck. I think the most beautiful part of Judaism for me is that there is an answer for literally everything. Yeah. There's a loophole and an answer. There's a lot of loopholes, oh. like threesomes. Can you have threesomes in Judaism? Actually, well, two dude threesomes, yeah. Two chick threesomes, no. And I was like, a man wrote that By rule? By the way, bullshit. <laughs> what do you call it when they had um, handmaidens? What was the fuck was that? That's a threesome. I, all I know is that there's there there's room for threesomes if it was like two men involved. Yeah, but think about this. Like, you know, um, we had the mistresses. We had Yaq, Jacob, one of the fathers, mm -hmm. had four wives. Well, he had two landlord. wives. There you go. <laughs> so he had Leah um, and he had Rivka. Mm -hmm. And he actually really, really loved Rivka and had, but she couldn't bear him as many children. So they had two handmaidens, Billa and Zilpa. Okay. Now, anyone who's watched Handmaidens on Hulu knows that what it is is the woman is fucking her husband. She's laying back and taking it, but underneath her lies another woman. Wait, did that whole thing come from Judaism? Well, it's it's like, biblical. It's that's biblical. Bibli well, yes, because I remember that setup. I just thought that was a director's vision. No, that is wow. biblical. That comes from the Torah, which also is in the Bible. Yeah. Um, and so that's where it came from. So is that not a threesome? He's technically fucking one woman, but the other woman is lying underneath and he's, you know. So think about it. Wow. Just process that. Well, like what was And that's going to be my first porn uh, director. Do it. Cut. <laughs> well, so what what was your introduction to the concept of sex growing up? Like when did that A family member stuck his penis in my mouth, so that was my first introduction. Oh, that would be That it, just yeah. went left really quick. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was I'm writing this whole new material for my show that I've been touring called Emotionally Unavailable. Mm -hmm. And I explained why I'm emotionally unavailable and all the fucked up shit that has ensued since. Mm -hmm. And um it, I actually talk about that. I talk about, I say that I grew up in a culture where we were told things that were bullshit. Like God only punishes people that he loves. That was one of the things that was like brainwashed in our mind. Wow. And as an eight year old, I was like horrified. Like God does not love me. I've never been punished. Like he's never challenged me. Mm. And then boom, a family member stuck their penis in my mouth. And I'm like, thank you, Hashem. He does indeed love me. Oh no. <laughs> When did when were you able to like recognize that as like trauma? It was a complicated situation and the state got I, I'm not going to go sure. into it. Thank God it's over or thank Godless or whatever you believe in. Yeah. But um, I will say that my introduction to the unity of, of, of what sex is mm -hmm. was in terms of wifely duties. I was engaged to be married and they send you to what's called Kala classes mm -hmm. where you learn about it for the first time. You learn about the birds and the bees. By the how way, old are you vaguely for that? I was 18. Okay. Um, and that's how the age that you're supposed to be married at. Now, here's the funny part. Men teach it to men. Women teach it to women, mm -hmm. which now that you think about it, these men, these boys, these sheltered boys that have no idea that they're going to go home the first night of their wedding and stick their penis in a vagina because they've never seen a vagina. They don't know what it is. And they go to men and men teach them about it. So my first experience was of, of it was a woman telling us, what it is she took out a diagram and drew it and said that this it's going to get hard and it's going to go inside of you and it's going to hurt and that's you know and then of course there's pleasure they do talk about pleasure which is something i appreciate with what i've been learning through this other show that there is a sense of pleasure and that like it's a it's like it's a husband's duty yeah but i will say that it's kind sex. of mind-blowing because it's so scary uh -huh. right so i've never heard of it i've never kissed a boy i've never been in contact with a boy so like i don't know what that's gonna feel like and you're telling me that it's pleasure like it doesn't feel like it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like it's something that i'll enjoy because 
There's no buildup. There's no flirting. There's no, you know what I mean? Right. But the idea that like a, a man has an obligation to please yes. his wife yes. is like Ona. very, Ona, Ona, yeah. Like that. So there's a lot of like conflicting, like almost accidentally sex positive stuff like in But in it's the also Torah, like a woman can't refuse her husband. So it's yeah. like, what's that about? And then again, out come the loopholes. Yes, she can if A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. And out come more loopholes. Like, you, you know, a uh, man is supposedly not allowed to, you know, uh, do oral sex on a woman, right? No, he can. It's got to be through panties. It's got, he can't look. All this What's sh- the purpose? Are we trying yeah. to make the baby? Like, okay, bro, like- you can suck a dick, suck my badge. Good day. <laughs> like, well, if you want to learn more about the intricacies of this stuff with Judaism and sexuality, I, I definitely recommend people check out The Joy of Text uh, wherever you listen to to the Man Whore podcast. But, you know, to get back to you and your origin story, so like you, you went to the, the Chala classes. Kala. Kala, is that different? Is Kala a Kala is a bride. A bride. Okay, Kala, what's Kala? Kala is the bread, bread? that we okay. eat. <laughs> Kala back, girl. Um, so you went to the Kala classes. I went to the Kala classes, and I was terrified for a number of reasons. Number one, I learned about mikvah. Mm. Which is, um, to me, traumatic that now I'm have to get, I'm gonna have to show my naked body first to another woman. By the way, just the irony: if you want to do comedy, first you show it to a woman, then you go home to your man. Mm. Which, if you think about it, the foreplay is just right about there. Well, you want? I mean, like you want to tell them like what the mikvah is. So and then a mikvah bring is a the purifying dog. bath. I know that word too. Yes, <laughs> purifying, as if there's something that needs to be purified. But, but since you are a virgin for the first time before you go home to your man, mm-hmm. you need to cleanse. Which technically, if you're a virgin, why do you have to? But whatever. But if you get, it's about get when you're having when you're menstruating. Correct. And you're in need of. Yes. So there are non-clean days. There, you know, they're called non-clean days where husband you, can't touch. I right? can't touch. He can't pass. You can't sit on a soft surface of a bed together. Um, can't sit on my couch. Yes. Oh my over. god, that would be just. <laughs> So hot. Um, and by the way, that's the thing. The more you restrict something, the hotter it is. Mm-hmm. It's curiosity. Mm-hmm. The things that I Googled when I was growing up because like, you know, and then obviously I've always felt things for girls. Now in hindsight, I understand what that was. But at the time, it was this burning curiosity for the forbidden, mm-hmm. which was also so hot. Yeah. I remember sticking my hand under this girl's skirt and she had a silk slip, mm-hmm. a slip, my brother, if I tell you, nothing hotter than a silk slip. Was this another Hasidic check? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. Was it, was Her name in- was Rifki, bro. And for everyone listening, you're going to be like, Rifki who? Quick, do the math of this girl. Oh, we went to camp together. And she would be like, you want to meet me by the bleachers? Check yes if interested. Check no if not interested. So is this like high school experimentation? Yeah, but we didn't do anything. We just, you just know, made nice. You made nice. And it was nice. <laughs> yeah. So so you you did end up getting married though, right? I did. Oh, so the mikvah is this purifying experience and you have to dunk depending on who you follow, which rabbi you follow, but either three times or seven times. And each time you must be completely immersed underwater naked and naked with no blockage, which means your nails have to be cut. You can't have nail polish on. They check, they inspect your nails to make sure there's no dirt underneath. Um, again, different mikvahs have different uh, stringencies, but for the most part, that's the general of it. Also, you um, cannot have any tattoos because mm-hmm. there's a blockage from your skin to the water. So that's right. how intense it is. And then you go home to your man and it's beautiful. There is beauty in when you miss someone, if there's more passion there for sure. But it's also absolutely terrifying the first time. And also the intimacy that comes from not having sex, mm-hmm. which for me as a demisexual, mm-hmm. if I need to label myself, I need to get to know someone. I need that trust. I need that mm-hmm. intimacy. To be with someone who understands me and underst- and then I am, f- and then I am, f- I'm free to be a freak. This girl right now that I'm like, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> you know. crazy to me, and I'll and you I'll discuss say fuck. more. I know. You can say it. I can't. I cannot. But um, no. Also, because we'll say finger fuck together. Oh, if you want to do it? shit. <laughs> One, two, three, finger fuck. Finger oh. fuck. <laughs> okay, but basically, it's because she trusts me and I trust her that I feel so comfortable saying like the things that I enjoy, which the things that I enjoy are complete submission. And to know that I can look her in the face and say, what I would like to do is tie you up head to toe where you can't move a muscle. And then I'm gonna put my tongue on your entire body and I'm 
you're, you, there's nothing you can do about it. To me, that's so fucking hot. Yeah. But I wouldn't feel comfortable saying that if I don't. Oh my God. Okay. If my family is listening, please stop listening right now. And also, if you're the girl that I'm dating, also stop Yo, listening. Yo, if your family's listening, they've already <laughs> texted you, you know? Like, <laughs> how long were you with your husband? We'll, we'll get, well, I yeah, want to, 12 we'll years. build up to this. 12 but, years. So, and, and how'd you get, when did you start realizing like maybe this entire, concept and structure wasn't for you well i also want to say i i feel i feel bad speaking about my husband and i don't i don't want to i don't i haven't gotten any him. negative no vibes i am just saying yeah. no because he's a really good guy yeah. but i will say that what drew me so much to him was he was a very feminine man he's gonna oh. hate me for this he had such soft you know he i was boss mm -hmm. so that worked did, did you all have kind of like a kinky sex life in oh my way? god no we're not talking about our sex life my husband and i okay. did not have a sex life oh. um but yeah i, I mean I, except for the one time that produced a child at least no i actually had my daughter through in fertility treatments oh okay um my child i want to correct that they're non-binary sure. um but yeah i i had my child through um fertility gotcha gotcha yeah so when insemination did, when did you realize like you want to exit this the marriage i yeah. think that for many many years it was we we did not belong together even his mother agreed <laughs> no um that's one thing her and i agreed on um uh we we shouldn't have ever gotten married i shouldn't have ever gotten married i was 18 i was a baby i was by was no like means your age roughly no actually he was 12 years older than me oh my yes and i was single for tragic for tragically like an extra year in my community that's a nightmare and was, I was it odd that he was still single at 30 yes yes and honestly it was he was 28 but i assume uh, this was arranged it was arranged through a matchmaker yeah. uh, and honestly my parents were very open-minded by letting me see him because he didn't have a beard which was like you know he was not as religious as the rest of my family and you were like mm, i can deal with but like this no beard is so femme exactly and, soft. and also he was a dentist so that's also <laughs> a no-brainer in my family because he um everyone in my family learned when they got married working is very bad if you're single you know you're not supposed to be working until you get married okay in this sect of the community Why? because you're supposed to focus on first torah get, yeah. torah men are meant to learn torah and the women work or their parents torah so, and get married yes and, and also be in synagogue all day learning yeah. from rabbis so that's the community that i come from they take yeah. that very seriously and then eventually some of the men go to work but honestly the first time that i had access to internet was in an internet cafe yeah and I started Googling what it feels like to be into other women. And then I found support groups and the rest is history. Were you finding um, like Hasidic support groups for women yes, who were into actually, women? Yes, actually, the funny part is, is that I fell in love with a woman from my community I mean, who had five children. And let me tell you something. I broke up with her 20 times. And the last time I broke up with her, I was like, I'm done because I want to leave this community. I don't want to be here. And she came back pregnant. There is nothing sexier to me than a fucking pregnant woman with a big swollen belly pregnant and swollen women. tits and pink nipples and i just want to fuck them all day me they're pregnant too. women i the last, oh, the, last hallelujah. Sex party, the last sex party i was at i was with my i guess ex um and like right oh my god your brand guys can no. we have a moment for billy and this fucking girl that broke up with him twice. Yeah, I don't know when this comes out. So, like, I don't know how removed we are from this, but good. But uh, the more but, removed, you'll watch but, it back and you'll but, be like, "Remember when I was in pain?" <laughs> well, the the last time we I was at a sex party, like we were we were like being intimate right next to this big pregnant woman. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Babe, like I'm really fucking pregnant." I've never had sex with a pregnant woman. Really, really want to one day. It's so nice hot. to still have a fuck it list so item, but like they are, they can, some women just wear pregnancy in such a sexual, also to me, sensual, a woman doing a woman's thing yeah. is to me watching anyone in their element, like uh, this girl that I'm seeing, right? So the other day she was in my house and she was just belting Matis Yahoo. It's like a rapper and no, she was I'm singing and it was like so hot because she was doing something she loved. So to me, to watch a pregnant woman be pregnant is fucking sexy yeah. anyway so exactly. i fell in love with her and she was in the community and we never had real she never touched me mm -hmm. we never had sex because i was terrified of burning in hell right and i thought I, the jews don't believe in hell well we do mm -hmm. we believe in first going to hell and then going to heaven hell is the cleansing process for heaven you have to pass through hell and and the way that i learned hell and when i say the jews keep in mind sure. We're talking, i mean the ultra orthodox yeah. jews hell is this horrible place where you get punished with plagues and beaten and burned in fires and that's gehenna and the worst thing you could think it's it's awful i thought about 
a, a million times about what would happen. I'm going to end up in the worst gates of hell. Because by the way, gossiping about somebody, somehow everyone feels comfortable doing that. But anything sexual, like, oh, she's a lesbian. Mm-hmm. Ugh, like who decided what's worse? Mm-hmm. Did you have a list directly from God? Did he tell you what's yeah. you know where, what I'm getting punishments for? But we have like things, they call it malchus, which are beatings. Which you you know, um, which is we have a holiday for it on Sukkot. We have what's called Hoshana Raba. You take a branch and you beat the men beat each other with the branches in this ultra orthodox community. It's like punishment, and it's because it's going to cleanse you. You know? Oh wow! Yeah, it's hot. Oh, <laughs> I mean, have you ever been to a banya? That's what they do at the Russian banyas. They have huge leaves and they beat your back with it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds painful. But it is. You know. By the way, all I wanted to do my entire life was be daddy. I just because to me, when I grew up, my dad and that this I mean, is you, a Hasidish you, man's role. Mm-hmm. He sits at the head of the table and his wife serves him and he's the breadwinner and the wife takes care of her man. And I was like, holy fuck, I want to be daddy. Well, what's your relationship with your gender? Do you feel like you? You are a woman. I feel like I'm nothing. Mm. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm nothing. And at times I feel very womanly. And sometimes I'm in the mood of putting on six inch heels and a lacy bra. Really? And I do that plenty. And I feel so womanly. And then sometimes I feel like walking around in boxers with a dick. And I also want you to suck my tits while you fuck me while I'm wearing a strap on. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? You want to get fucked me, while you, yeah. Sit on my strap. I want to fuck you, but also suck my tits. Sure. You know. Yeah. I don't know. This is crazy. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I it's just when you let the audience what? know that I'm high as a motherfucking kite. <laughs> now she's just trying to look for something to blame. Oh my god! It's over there. It's, <laughs> it's in, <laughs> Thank it's you. In the ashtray. I was looking for the joint. Oh, it's in the ashtray. Okay. <laughs> sorry carry on that's okay that's okay <laughs> so so what was like the conversation process or the realization to get out of the marriage i remember walking into i taught in a very religious high school mm-hmm. i didn't just teach i was a um i was heading their productions and i was a big deal my daughter was in the most religious school we belonged in a very religious environment I was, I got off the elevator to walk into class and I just fucking broke. I stood at the end of the elevator and I cried and I called my husband and I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm walking into a religious high school where if the girls would know who I am, I would 100% be fired that day. Mm -hmm. Not from anything you've done, just what's inside your heart and your mind. Yeah. And it's like, don't worry. I don't want to fuck 16 year olds. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter to them. I'm perverted and I'm Mm -hmm. disgusting. I would lose everything. And I hated myself. I was not happy with who I was. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, I'm on the same page as you. He's like, we're both in this together and we can just keep doing this. Like, mm-hmm. That was a problem. We, he knew me and he was comfortable with living with me for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want that anymore. But it was that moment where I was like, I need to get the fuck out. And it kills me. And that's why today I don't like, I don't subscribe to anything politically either because yes, obviously, you know, I'm not a conservative right. But in the sense of what people think conservative right is. But also, I don't believe in government. I, I don't believe in, like, I believe they're full of shit. And I don't believe in extremities. And I don't want to be told what to fucking do. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Prostitution should be legalized. We should be legalized. Everyone should do whatever the fuck makes them happy as long as they're not hurting anyone. And stop fucking pushing rules down our throat. Mm. Because because I came from the fundamentalist community that I did come from, I no longer believe in community. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry to bust all your bubbles out there that people that you're like, I belong to the LGBTQ this and that and that shit. Let me tell you something. The only reason you belong is because you all agreed to have something in common. But the minute you have something that goes against that common thing, you're out of the community. That's a fact. And when I sobered up and realized that, it was the most freeing experience of my life. Because when I left my, you know, the ultra rigid whatever, I was like, yes, gays. And I was like all up in the LGBT. And I was part of a group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, queer exchange. Okay? Okay. Queer exchange. Somebody put up a sign uh, on the group, on a post. Are you like, I'm cutting this? No, I'm just writing down the name. Someone put a post up and wrote... Um, FYI, there's a TR asterisk asterisk P sign on North second and blah, blah, blah. Uh, if anybody wants to go burn it or anything, you know, 
What's T R uh, Trump? Oh, okay. but he asterisked it. He wouldn't even write it out because you know, God forbid. So, so everybody's commenting, "Burn it!" I will Venmo whoever goes to take it down. So I said, "Is this what we've become now? Like now are these people that are like paying people to go rip off property? Like what the fuck is happening to us?" And wow, did I get slaughtered. Fuck you. I hope you die, you cis privileged dyke. Right. Um, and first of all, I'm just mind blown. Like privileged. I mean, I don't know how to explain any more that I was in a cult and a prison and mm-hmm. I feared for my safety. Like I was outed. I was fired from my job. Mm-hmm. In one day I lost my job, my marriage, my community, my parents like this like I how what the fuck I was penniless and 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 I can't even I, I can't even wrap my head around somebody calling me privileged, but whatever. The, uh, anyway, it happened. And I was like, wait a minute. Does it say queer liberal exchange or queer Democrat exchange? Or is this just queer exchange? Well, not for nothing. My only stance on that is just like, hey, when that, cons- when that other party starts saying that... It- like starts doing not just say like holds a flag up but like actually makes votes that are pro lgbt then i'd be like then we can stop the treating it like it's one person's it one side's issue versus the other just one side this like measurably i mean this is data it's like they just don't vote for once they start doing it then it's not i don't think we have to assume queers want democrats like typically right but right now like only one side wants to actually vote for right so no i mean the other side has loads and loads of um um, staff that are that are gay right but they don't want that staff to have free right like the like the right listen i'm not disagreeing (laughs) Uh, with you by the way and i'm not i'm not i'm not even that i don't politically care i would love to live in a world (laughs) where Everybody fucking lets everybody live. That's all I want. Me as well. You know, as and, well. and you're right. There's only Listen, one side that I, won't but do I, it. I left a community that didn't let me live. Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? But now I'm not going to go back into a, another community that's also, yeah. again, not letting me live. Yeah. I threw a Valentine's Day party last year. I threw a dance party and I got a lot of hate comments like, it's COVID and da, 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 da. and I'm like, listen, you do what's good for you. Everyone who's coming knows what they're walking into and is vaxxed. Mm-hmm. And this is a party that I'm throwing because my mental health matters. Mm-hmm. I sat home for six months with somebody really mentally not okay. Mm-hmm. Like I had my own situations going on. I needed to have music and that's what I needed to survive. Mm-hmm. Some people pop a pill. That's my pill. Sure. You know? So- so when did you start to finally feel like like when did you first feel that you were you're being yourself and happy post leaving the commu- that community and and post divorce? Um when did you first be like, "Oh, I'm finally being my I'm being Leah." You know, I think it's like an onion. Uh-huh. After every layer came off, I felt another piece of myself come off, but I would probably say that I'm not even myself till today. Mm-hmm. I I have a lot of trauma physically yeah. as you you talked about like you know tsnias you would think someone like me because everyone tells me like i give off a very sexual energy yeah and i, I think am, it's the number of tattoos maybe a certain number of tattoos we're like <laughs> that like, person okay, fucks bitch wants sex. Um, <laughs> like, by, I think by the way i fuck yeah. just to be clear i do <laughs> and i fucking like it but here's the thing it takes me forever i've gone years without it and then even in my relationship when i was committed and loved the other person when i felt disconnected emotionally there was no way that i could then fuck that person like i never understood angry sex when i'm angry the last thing on my mind is touching you Mm. to me that's how i operate and on top of that because Look, I was beaten as a child, like mm. hard. My father would hit me with a strap and I love you, Tati. I, I understand. He tells me till this day, if he could take it back, he would. Mm. But you know, he was a child of a Holocaust survivor, blah, blah, blah. I love how this went left real quick. Mm. But the point is, is that the idea of somebody touching me never feels safe to me. Yeah. And I had other situations, but I had a lot of trauma. Is it the same? Do you feel the same discomfort doing the touching? No. Right. That's so is that thing. why do you think that's I'm why you're very toppy? dominant? Yeah. And I get a ton of I to, I you feel come, like you have all that I, control. And I also come from it. Mm-hmm. When you are pleasured and I watch your pleasured face, I can fucking come. Like yeah. and um and that's what does it for me. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy intimacy and that I'm not open to somebody also touching me, but I need to feel incredibly safe. So even in my last relationship, like I lost the safety at some point just because of her own personal stuff. And I couldn't have sex. I just couldn't, 
you can't touch me and I don't want to touch you if I don't feel emotionally connected to you. So now what has been different now with this new oh sex that you God. had? Finally? Okay, so who the fuck knows when this podcast is going to come out or if we'll still be together, but here we go. So this girl is so different and I'll tell you why. So I've been single for quite some time mm-hmm. and I have been exploring non-monogamy. Wait, so wait, just frame a reference. How long ago did you leave your Okay, ex-husband? so um, I left my husband and then I would say shortly thereafter... I met my ex-wife. So <laughs> So you met, you got you got married again. Yes, yeah, so you got wait, one marriage you jumped into another. Idiot. Wait, I never got legally married. Thank uh, okay. the Lord. But no, no, not if she's listening, by the way, not thank the Lord that I didn't get legally married to you. You're wonderful. Just thank God that we didn't have to go through another legal battle. Yeah. That's all. It was another one less headache. Yeah. Um, so to clarify, unfortunately, after I left my husband, instead of taking the time to really figure out myself and my needs and what I like and what I don't like. I fell into another relationship really quickly. Now, for me, it was relatively quickly. And I also feel bad for my ex because she suffered a lot because I had just come out of another relationship. I was not ready. I wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. And everything that happened in our relationship in the beginning was because she made it happen. Mm -hmm. I want to be exclusive. I said, sure. I want to be your girlfriend. Sure. Actually, I said not. No, the first few times, but she persisted and she was gorgeous and she was kind and she had a beautiful soul and an amazing family. I was like, what the fuck? I'd have to be nuts. Like she's everything that I could have ever dreamed of. But I didn't know that she maybe wasn't everything that I ever dreamed of because I didn't take the time to figure out what the fuck I want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We fell in love and we, I, I thought she was very challenged. She wasn't able to touch me the way she wanted and because of Because of the because trauma. Of my own. Right. And the thing is, she was also emotionally going through her own shit. So she didn't have an understanding for my trauma. Mm-hmm. It's not her fault. It's not my fault. I didn't have an understanding for my own trauma either. Mm-hmm. At that point, I started going to CODA, which changed my life. What's CODA? Codependent Anonymous. It's a real fucking addiction for anyone who doesn't I've know. I've been considering it for myself recently as well. I will tell you all about it, but I am a recovering codependent. Very grateful. I don't miss a meeting. It is probably way worse than drugs because you see the results of drugs immediately or almost immediately and codependency you're like let me get in this thing for like six months and hope and it then works you'll out. go to rehab and you'll be fine and then you'll have all the tools you need but yeah. with codependency not only do you lie to yourself but you manipulate everyone else around you people think codependency guys i'm calling myself out on my own shit here is like oh it's such a great thing it means you need others approvals it means you're such a nice person no Mm-mm. no you're terrified to say no and because of that you created a character in your head and you've sold this character to people. So they think, Billy's so sweet. He's always doing shit for me and he's always so kind and he never says no and he doesn't, he sets and limited key, boundaries. I'm building resentment for not taking care inside. of myself. Yep. And here's what happens mm-hmm. one day out of the blue, you lose your shit on them. Yep. And they're like, what? Why didn't you say it sooner? Because so, I didn't say all the other no's, exactly. like so the hundred no's the before that. Who's the manipulator here? You, Billy. My, my, I'm, but I'm manipulating everybody, exactly. including myself. Exactly. Right? Yeah, no, I 100% So it's agree. like the worst kind of self-sabotage. Yeah. So once I took accountability for that, our relationship obviously went to shit because the minute I started like setting the boundaries and, you know, and She's then fighting the... Exactly. And I don't blame her. She was used to me doing everything. And by the way, it's such a mess. You're an amazing employee until you're not. You're financially great till you're not. You love the person till you don't. You love yourself till you, it's a fucking nightmare of hell. Anyway, so obviously the marriage fell apart and 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 I'm figuring out who I am right now. That's the journey. So I've done ayahuasca twice. Okay. Um I've definitely relapsed in my codependency and landed up dating people that really hurt me, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just more of the same. Um and I love the roller coaster. In fact, with this poly girl, we were out the other night and things were getting intense. And then her phone rang and there were a billion texts from her girl, her other other girl that she's dating. And it was just nonstop. And if I tell you, if I had a dick, it would have been so hard. It would have fallen off. That's how hard it it was. It was like good. Like this. I was so turned on by the toxicity of it. (laughs) And that's how my brain works. Mm -hmm. So so so, what was this? The finally, you broke the dry spell. Well, tell, tell me about it. Tell me how did it feel. The, it what was, happened? It just happened. It's so fresh. What's just like last night? Literally, like a couple of days ago. Good for you. And it's been on my mind twenty four seven. Um, she's 
what I what okay, here's what really turns me on. She presents masculine. Okay. So that's hot thing number one. Because the way that she moaned in my ear was so fucking feminine that I was like, I did that. Uh, it was so hot. Cause like uh, she looks like a boy and oh my God, we had the same Calvin's, which of course I took off of her and I put it in my pocket and I'm never giving it back. I told her I'm washing it, but that's a lie. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh my moaning God. Moaning is very underrated from men as well. Cause like my moan sounds like a chick. My, like I can do grunts, but like, like my, actually if I'm being touched softly and I'm being like put in a certain subspace You'll or be something like, like mm. that. No, it's like, ah, uh, like that, that's, that's like a meme. That's, that's a so meme. hot. I'm a, I'm a very, ah. Uh, Fuck. That's so, you spend, uh, and that's an actual body big, reaction. Big into, yeah. That is like my natural enjoyable state that's, that's actually very hot like if i'm so, being in a dominant headspace i kind of like i it kind of turns into a grunt right but, so I all, grunt. but it's also at least 20 percent of that is me being performative like okay but i'm I, being dominant see, by so the I way go, i mm. love positive feedback yeah. so the more you tell me the more i'll keep going so right. if you go i'm so wet like feel how fucking wet i am god i want this so bad i'm like i can't stop i will just continue to fuck you but this was a discourse on twitter like last week i was seeing like people were talking about men moaning and how they should moan more and i'm like yeah because that's positive feedback of course like, i'll moan and even thank if I you don't. gen zers will moan so fucking loud you'll hear them to timbuktu exactly yeah i know it's like guys like moan more even like there's two types of moans i got uh or two reasons i moan one is like the involuntary bodily reaction and then i'll also moan if i'm just i just want to communicate this is good keep doing that billy do you fuck everyone that comes on your podcast not everyone but everything this is all foreplay everything we're talking about is sexy <laughs> like do you f shut the mic off and just like pull your pants down uh it's happened <laughs> of course it has holy I mean, shit it's usually not i turn it off pull my pants down. i mean i turn it off and they tell me to pull my pants down oh but my god it's happened uh it's been a while since i've like fucked immediately after the thing i think the last time oh God, maybe it was laura delorado where like we turned the mics off and fuck that was fun <gasps> but it just depends yeah so I couldn't believe that I did this, but mm -hmm. I did this. I went on something called the Boobs Cruise. Yep. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. something oh, like that. Oh my God. So everyone's topless. Now this was my first experience and I was not topless. And so femme if, people only, right? No, it is everyone, oh. men and women. And uh, this blew my mind. But first it was topless. By the end of the uh, trip, it was bottomless. You have to check in your phone because majority of the people on the boat, and we're talking about like real upscale yeah. doctors, lawyers, well, we these are whatever. Pictures. This is like intense. They pull up to an island, an empty island. Everyone gets dressed and continues talking to each other as if like no big deal. I was mind blown. I'm like, I just saw your dick. Like, it's no then, big deal. Wait, then we get back on the boat. The way back was wild. They had a blowjob contest. Mm -hmm. They lined up nine men, nine women. And it was who would suck the other person off fastest. And the winner got a bottle of tequila. Yeah. And these girls worked. Yeah. It was intense. Now, for all of you that are listening and like, Leia, you're disgusting. My, let me my just fans, tell you. My fans have like been on yeah, but My Billy, fans won that contest. Let me tell you, your, your <laughs> listeners are cool. All the new listeners that are coming to listen because of me. Yeah. And, the, and I want you to stat. Show me the stats. I'm curious to see how many I perverts. Forster, uh, I want to know how many perverts I have on my page. Okay. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Um, my point is for those of you that are listening, please understand. I've been through a lot in my life and I'm living. This is how I'm living. I'm discovering and exploring. Let me live. Thank you. You should, you should be coming. Have you ever found interest in sex parties? Um, I've gone. Yes. Where, so where, let where me do tell you go? You. So I I'm went, on I went Saturday. to only one. Uh, can we talk off camera? Sure. Cause Oh good. It films after. So even if you tell me where you're going, no one's going to follow me. Um, yeah. I have quite a few friends that are like poly and also sure. enjoy like these type of things. For me, this is fairly new. And when I say fairly new, I mean like a year yeah. that I'm like, you know, but I was at a sex party many, many years ago, right after I left my husband, before I met my wife. Mm -hmm. I went to LA to a mansion. Mm -hmm. You had to send in your pictures in advance. Like it was very yeah. screened. Only women. I've what never- was it ca called? I don't know. It was the most beautiful- Was it beautiful, called Skirt Club? I, no, but no. I know Skirt Club. I've I don't had like Genevieve Skirt Club. On the show. <laughs> so I, I'll tell you why I love Genevieve. I'll tell so, you why I don't like Skirt, skirt Club. They're, all the women are bi. Correct. And they're all going home to their husbands. Correct. I generally, when I'm attracted to women, it's gay women. I like women who like 
women exclusively. You want women, but you want women who like look like they like women. Like you want someone you don't want. No, I like all women. You do? Okay. Oh my God. Okay. I like everything. I like every shape, you don't need color, the wallet size. On the Hell no. I like every shape, color, size, woman, tall, short, big, little. It doesn't matter. It's energy for me. If, if I can I, tie you up, I'm into you. Yeah, I was. If I, you know, if you give me bottom energy, and that doesn't mean that you don't also have top energy. But if I'm sensing that the dynamic here is going to be me topping, I'm, yeah. I'm in. Gotcha. You know? Okay. So I walk into this mansion in L.A. Holy fuck! So many beautiful women. You got a bracelet when you walked in. So like red if you wanted to participate, green if you just wanted to observe. And I took a green because I wasn't ready to participate. Good and for I you, have, by the way. Yeah, and also I'm terrified of of um, STDs. Mm -hmm. Funny joke. I met up with this girl that asked me if I COVID tested before she on you know on Tinder, and she's like, "Did you COVID test?" And I was like, "Yes, I'm negative, but I'm positive for chlamydia." As a joke, I thought it was funny, and she says, um, "No judgment. See you at eight. <laughs> Bro. I fucking died. I died. I canceled, by the way. And I deleted my. I deleted Tinder. The proper response was, like, I'll see you in about 10 days if you've done some antibiotics. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? It was an out-of-body experience. But anyway, in this mansion. So I walk into the first... First of all, it was like magnificent. I teach Shakespeare. So I'm like a big fan of like anything, um, anything Shakespeare-esque or anything in that time period. And so it was all very like speak no more vibes, you know? So I walk in in the first room and it's like Hamlet themed and Kings and there's a girl and she's laid out on a throne and she's getting strapped in the front, strapped in the back and strapped in her mouth. If I tell you every orifice was covered and it was like, she was just not even screaming. She was like, I've never heard such moans. And I was like, what the hell? I've never seen. I went from nothing to a whole lot of something. Yeah. It was mind blowing. It was a lot of fun. That's dope. <laughs> and so you feel like uh, this, this new sexual partner is really opening you up and you're, you're able to be touched in a way that you, you can I'll accept? I'll be very honest with you. And I don't know where we'll be in a few months. And I'm super sure, high. So I'm just going to go out on go a limb and say this. Like, it's so much more than sex. And I have feelings for her. Good so, for you. Yeah. I'm so, so glad I don't to know hear where that. That's gonna go. We'll see. That's awesome. And I'm being vulnerable enough to say that. Fuck. I'm glad. I'm glad we you don't are. know. We could be broken up in a few months. I, I hope. I hope you're not like, hey, you can leave in all the finger fuck stuff. Can you cut? Can you cut out the part? Can you where cut I have that? Feelings? But she broke my heart. Yeah. <laughs> um. Who knows? Who knows where it's going? It's complicated. She's also enmeshed with someone else, and sure. and I'm also you, terrified of being in a relationship. I have no. The here's the crazy part. This is how I know that I was never really monogamous. Correct. When I was getting married, I told my wife, when you go to AC, have fun. Don't hold back. Do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And she was horrified. What do you mean by that? What are you trying to say? Should I go fuck someone else? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, just whatever it is. Don't think about me. Yeah. You know, and I've had this experience where I met up with a girl in Vegas that I really clicked with and I told my wife about it and she wasn't comfortable with it and I had to cut her out. And it's I didn't get to explore things and I was a little resentful and I did discuss it with her. So I do feel that if I went back into um, something else, another connection, I would definitely never be able to do that intense, rigid thing again. Um, but also to that I say, who knows? Who knows? Because if I do decide that I want to be monogamous, I'll know that that was a decision I didn't make lightly, mm -hmm. you know? And that's and that's what I've been saying since I started. It's one of the few things I've consistently said since I started this show. Um, I said monogamy you should choose it you should not default into that's it. that's what i feel and that's how i came to my uh, relationship with judaism mm -hmm. it's like i really am a very spiritual person i believe in god and i believe in judaism and i believe i could be a better jew i do mm -hmm. that's honest um but my relationship with judaism is one that i chose right you shouldn't Everything be forced that, exactly. into it you shouldn't default exactly. into it you should know there are options yes. and then choose and by the way the that's why want. i'm also like you know even my own sexuality in terms of who i'm connecting with mm. i'm very open to everything because the choices that i make are conscious decisions bottom boys out there listen up a there's always a chance apparently listen by the way I, am i open to getting rammed by a dick one day maybe I say maybe. My philosophy in life is maybe. I, I bet you you would still be kind of like a power, like a power bomb in oh, that way. Definitely. You'd be, like you would be ordering him to rail you. Right. He wouldn't be railing oh, you. Oh, 100%. And that's how I would. He'd if like I would ever boy. let a girl touch me, yeah. 
I would only allow it to be because I said touch me. But even now, so even with this chick who's like blowing your she mind, hasn't touched it's me. still there's still an aversion to the being touched. You're still doing the touching. I mean, she touched my arm the other day and I felt my body oh. tense up. How fucked up is so that? So can you receive oral? No. No? No. Oh no. I know. That's okay. I know. I <laughs> I want that for you. I want it for Leia, me too. I really want you to one day be able to be so comfortable you can like lay back on a couch I, I, and take someone's like head of hair and shove it in your crotch and enjoy so, it. I want that for as as your new friend. I want that. I for know. You. <laughs> and, the, and, and the thing is, it's like in my head, I want it. Yeah. I really want it, but like, I just can't get there. It's Are you like in therapy. I am in a lot of therapy. Yeah. Do you ever I've been try in therapy sex therapy for many years? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm really working towards it and i've come to the point where i can touch myself and think about it good for you so i'm there i'm glad yeah it's really i i've had bad experiences that's the thing and this is like without calling out any of the people that i've been in relationships with because i don't want to make anyone feel bad but i definitely allowed myself to do things sexually that i did not want to do Mm -hmm. and i actually remember experiences where i was so detached from myself that I had like tears coming down from my eyes mm-hmm. as things were being done to me, mm-hmm. you know, like dissociating. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And it's like, you know, even I- I'll say it like even ugh, I can't say it. Never mind. I want okay. to, okay, but let's say being touched and I'm sure you can use your imagination. Okay. That's so much for me. That is so much for me. And I was minimized. Like I was told that's so childish. Like, I don't like that. That's not what I like. So now I'm finally letting you do something and you're telling me that's not even what you like. I'm like, fuck, I'm out. Like, so I just rather not. And that's why I've gone without relationship or sex or whatever. I don't want any of it. I don't need it. I take care of myself. I fuck myself every single day before I get out of bed. And when I get into bed, some might say I'm a sex addict. I don't think so. I do have a very insatiable appetite. Like I see now, Mm -hmm. I realize now that once she opened that, door i just want to fuck i'm at the gym and i'm doing push-ups and i'm like i want fuck and i'm lifting and i'm like i want fuck i just want to fuck and i want to fuck everything and everyone and i know that it's because she opened up this energy for me you know i am a sexual person but for me sex is connection and so in order for me to connect with you there's a certain amount of vulnerability Mm -hmm. that has to come with it i'm not down for that ride you know Good. It's, it sounds like you have a really good handle of like what you need and what you want, and you're just trying to figure out how to get to uh, how to get there. So, you know, I think we're all rooting you on. We <sighs> all, Leah, we all just want you to come. Yeah, that's all. We just all want you to be a come <laughs> with somebody. That's all. Um, do you, are you down to do? I had an idea for a bonus episode, um, or at least like a starting point to do. Um, I well, something we didn't talk about was the whole outing situation. Would you be down to Absolutely. chat about that? Okay, so Patreon people, you'll hear that tomorrow. But for now, Leah. Where can people go to find you? And I think you may have something big you want to share that they can go watch you on a thing, on a platform. Oh, on a thing. Okay. So where you can find me is at Leah Forster, L-E-A-H-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can follow me there. And if you're cute, you can follow me home. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Billy. Rabbi Audience Linzer of one. rolled his eyes at that one last time he said it. <laughs> I'm like, maybe he wanted to follow me home. Oh, hi, Rabbi. Oh, fuck by the way that's the hottest there's thing to not me. a chance he wants. fucking with um like repressed people like if i go to a religious wedding and i walk in all i smell is repression <laughs> i just want to like walk around and like start fingering people <laughs> <laughs> i feel like they would be thankful <laughs> Oh my god, I'm done. I'm done with that. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So carry Instagram on. Instagram at Leia Forster. At Leia Forster. Yes. So yeah. Sorry. So yeah. So um, I think everything I need to say is on my Instagram. Okay. That's really the best because yes, obviously I have something very big coming to a large platform very shortly. The only thing is, is that I need to let them do sure. the. It's not. It's not announced yet. Exactly. Okay. But there will be something. And as really stoned big. as she is, I cannot seem to get her to slip out an exclusive, and that's okay. I know. <laughs> Wait. Oh, I've given you. Ex- what are you talking about? I just told you that I've broken my sexless streak, <laughs> and I've also talked about the fact that I, I'm very, gen- I'm fluid in my yeah, gender and sexuality. Yeah. So you got that. I'm Nobody else. You. I'm teasing. I'm Absolutely. teasing. I'm all so go, for the tease. Go. So go on my Instagram, her. yeah, and you guys can come watch me. I'm thinking of 
doing the premiere party for whatever it is at City Winery. So I'll keep you posted on that. It's really cool. It's a cool venue. Fantastic. And she yeah. does very funny videos. So uh, y'all check that out. And uh, again, Patreon people, more for you tomorrow. But for now, Leah, why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Have a great day, guys. And let's keep it coming. Could you relate? Did you enjoy? Do you got thoughts and opinions? We would love to know more about how you connected to this week's episode in the Champagne Room, our super free, super awesome, super sex positive Discord server. Uh, We have an episode discussion channel where you can pop in and share your thoughts with your fellow fan whores. I know a lot of you can relate to the religion and sex and shame stuff, so I expect that channel to be filled with quite a bit very soon. Again, you can gain access and introduce yourself today at manhorpod.com slash discord. I got to roll through these quick uh, so I can put pants back on and join Evan on Zoom for the therapies. Uh, <laughs> um, tomorrow, there's going to be a bonus episode talking about how uh, Leo was outed. Uh, you're going to hear that in a bonus episode tomorrow exclusively on Patreon. Uh, you can gain access to that bonus episode and over 200 bonus episodes at patreon.com slash Podcast. That's Patreon, P-A-T, you know how to spell it, dot com slash Podcast. If you're interested in some bonus content that's a bit more on the explicit side, I recently came on a piece of toast because I figure there's got to be an audience for that somewhere. If you want to unlock some sexy content like that and stuff where I come without any food present, uh, you can do so on my free OnlyFans, free to follow at OnlyFans.com slash CallMeBilly. All right, make sure you're following me on the places. I'm on Twitter at the Billy Presida. I'm on Instagram at Billy is Presida. Please follow the podcast wherever you're listening and do share the show on your general social media. Go ahead and show me on Maine. There are people sharing a conspiracy theorist guy every day, all the time. I think you're allowed to like a little slut show and it will make my little make my horror heart grow. All right, everybody, I go do some uh, emotional healing Enjoy yourselves. See you in the champagne room. Stay slutty. Beducated.com teaches you real sex techniques using real people, not just diagrams and pussy puppets. Get 70% off an annual membership with code MANHORE at beducated.com. That's code MANHORE at B E D U C A T E D dot com. Or click the link in the show notes.